So tonight, we have a really wonderful speaker for you. Gina Gibson is a multimedia artist and a professor of digital communications at Black Hill State University. She became Sanford Lab's first ever artist in residence in the summer of 2019. Over the past few months, Gina has mined the depths of surf for data and materials to use in creating a body of work inspired by the research and other activities and projects that take place nearly a mile underground. Gina's experience here will culminate in an exhibit this summer, right around Sanford Lab's annual Free Science Festival Neutrino Day, which by the way takes place January, or July 11th, I want you to put that on your calendars, please, and all of you come. So mark your calendars, as I said. Now, through her work, Gina tries to draw attention to things that seem too small to warrant our immediate attention. This, she says, is her work's strongest parallel to the research at Sanford Lab, where scientists look at near imperceptible interactions between subatomic, subatomic particles in order to understand galaxy-sized phenomena. Please help me welcome Dr. Gina Gibson. Thank you, Constance. Um, I'm gonna have thank yous at the end too, but I am overwhelmed to see so many of my colleagues and friends and students. Oh, um, so thank you for that. And uh, I learned a lesson, you apparently need a pocket for a mic, so that was, we, we almost had a little technical kind of thing there, but thank you, Matt. Um, so I'm gonna try to explain what I've been doing because most of the time the thing I'm asked is what are you doing? So uh, I'll do my best and it's dark in here because I requested that and it, all my students were like, yeah, she loves a dark classroom. Um, and it's true. Uh, so I'm gonna ask you to take a little journey with me and I'm just gonna start with a video. So my name is Gina Gibson, and I'm a professor, I'm an artist, I'm a graphic designer, I'm a collector of objects and ideas, many of you know this. Um, I'm a karaoke enthusiast, which has played out really well the last few months. Um, I'm an amateur quiche queen, thanks to a good friend I'm learning how to cook, I have made seven quiche in like two months. Um, I'm a dog mom, and the rest is to be determined, but I'm gonna explain some of what's here. And hey, why not start a talk with Da Vinci? Uh, so let's set the bar really high when we talk about science and art. But we're talking about somebody who, well, they're curious, right? That's the thing I think artists, scientists, people have in common is our curiosity. So as I've been entering these spaces, that's the thing I've seen that I'm tapping into with other people. So Da Vinci was talking about everything from flying machines to how our bodies worked. And if you think about it, shouldn't we all be curious about the plants around us? about how things work. We're used to seeing science and art by interacting with things that explain something that might be difficult. So I might understand a tree better because of an illustration that an artist has created. I like my Sibley uh, Guide to Birds. I use it on a regular basis. We might interact with science and art collaborations through you know, graphs and things that make difficult concepts more easy to understand. And there are opportunities, I knew I'd have a few young people in this audience that might need to hear this. If you want to make a life, life where you actually can make money, you have the option of possibly going into science or medical illustration, and there are guilds, and there are groups, and you can join them. And then there's a the thing I'm doing, and it's been done in other places. So Fermi Lab started theirs a short time ago, six or so years ago. Um, CERN has had a residency program for a while. And then there's this one residency that was at Bell Labs that's rather interesting. 
So we have Lillian F. Swartz. She's one of those kind of heroes of artist in residence. She in the 60s and 70s had an opportunity to work with computers and scientists and make some really off the wall work. And I do mean off the wall. So you go into a gallery and there's videos with laser beams and all kinds of unusual things at a time where an artist wouldn't have had access to those kind of materials or ideas. And I've fallen in love with an artist's work that I encountered at Fermilab. Her name is Angela Gonzalez. She was Fermilab's 11th employee. Now think about that, 11th employee. She was there for over 30 years and her fingerprints are all over the place when you visit Fermilab. She made the logo, she made Christmas cards, everything. She was not technically an artist in residence, but she certainly was residing there. And I've connected to her work for multiple reasons. She works in symbol sets. And that is something I've done in my own previous work. So I had a body of work years ago. I moved to South Dakota in 2008 for a job at Black Hill State University. And I thought, okay, I'll spend a year there. Okay, what year is it? Um, I fell in love. But I also had some tragedy that happened back home. My mother had passed away from a 12 year battle with all kinds of things that ended with cancer. So I had to like figure out how to pick myself up. And one of those things has always been art, even though I had a hard time making art. So I had to make things simple. I didn't know how to make things any other way. It just had to be simple. So the door. For me, the door, everything has like deep meaning. There's multiple meanings, and sometimes they contradict each other. A door is an opportunity to either close an opportunity or go through, right? So you have multiple facets. A chair is a place to sit and rest, or it can be a place to stay and not move forward. The ladder. So the ladder, this is particularly interesting to me as I show you images of what I've seen underground. Uh, a ladder's functional, it's a tool that's useful. It was a way for me to say that I could reach the heavens or reach my mother. So it was an interesting, here's something for me that's a secret that I don't always tell people when I put it in a work, a lot of times I'm making that reference. I also had a little toy ladder that I think was a part of some toy, like some engine or something that was a fire truck. And that little ladder hung around and I kind of wish I still had it. And then the work, I have a tendency to bring things back up. So I made a body of work a few years ago where I was collecting objects that were from thrift stores and basically anything discarded that everybody thought was trash. I was like, can I have that? I might put in some artwork. Oh, I'm in the woods, I think I'll pick this up. There were a lot of bones involved, but I'm not gonna show you all of those. Doors and chairs that pop back up again. Broken things, because I think if you make something and you take the moment to say that broken thing's important, somehow it can be beautiful. And I'm gonna show you what I do all the time. Everywhere I go, I'm always looking. I'm always taking photos or jotting notes down or doing sketches because I feel like the entire world is interesting. Our little dandelion. I also am influenced by architecture. I did a trip to Japan and I was just blown away by how beautiful the architecture was. I'm interested in pattern and symmetry. And that's that part where I know there's that little thread of science that has always spoken to me. Train stations, buildings that I've manipulated far beyond what you can tell what they are. I thought of jazz when I did this. It's like, it feels jazzy. Well, how did I go from outside to underground? Well, the first time I was invited. So in 2013, Matt Kappas took this picture. I'm gonna just say that a lot because Matt Kappas, I think, has taken every picture of me since I got here. Um, in 2013, I came here by invitation. I was a part of a group uh, show. There were about 20 of us or a little over 20. And I thought, how am I gonna make work about dark matter? What is dark matter? And I was quite perplexed and overwhelmed with work. And I almost didn't do it because I thought I don't have time. Oh, what a mistake that would have been. So a seed got planted and I did make a piece. And I was meeting with a friend and we were talking physics on Sundays and it was very fun. And I was trying to solve some problems for myself. I suddenly had combined the symbol set with my mirror images. And I didn't even notice that until I put the PowerPoint together. And I went, oh. So sometimes you don't know what you're doing until way after the fact. So the bullseye represented the search, and then I was in the Davis campus, which I'll talk a little bit about what that is. 
I was in an underground area that's, a, that's much cleaner, and there's wires and interesting things everywhere. So I have those elements, and then I have water, because I was trying to symbolize something that felt like you know, bubbles or something like that. So I was trying to figure out, how do you represent dark matter in my imagination? And here I am as the artist in residence, as of May. And the word residence is the one I want to sit with for a second. So I'm residing here. I'm situated here. And very intentionally, I'm going in and I'm asking questions. And many of the physicists and engineers can attest, I will keep asking you questions. If you open your door to me, I will keep talking to you. I will send you texts, and I will ask you about books, and that is how it will work. And as mentioned, on Neutrino Day, I will have a one-person show, and I will do a talk then with the work. But first, I was in for something. I had to have training and education about a culture and a place. And it's different than what I'm used to at Black Hill State. First of all, I had to learn what these acronyms are. What's PPE versus PMT? I had no idea. So personal protective equipment versus a photo multiplier tube, which by the way, I now know what one is, but I cannot quite explain what it does, but I kind of know, just enough to scare myself. Um, a trip action plan, like you're on the tap. What is the tap? Somebody tell me what the tap is. Um, and brass and drifts and all these things. So I went to my eye doctor because I had to get a prescription eye safety wear, and I said, can I have pictures of my eyeballs? Which is always the thing your eye doctor wants to hear. And I said, well, I might put them in my art, which is also, my doctor knows me, so he's probably like, of course you want your eyeballs. And a few weeks later, I had a folded piece of paper that was a printout of my eyeballs, and I was very excited. I get to dress up pretty cool. I'm pretty excited. I kind of want to do this all the time. Um, again, Matt Kappas takes the best pictures. Um, so you have to wear protective gear. And I should go back for a second. Clean room gear is hard to put on. And by the time you're in it, you're very sweaty. Right? It's very sweaty. But it's worth it, because your dust and your human debris will ruin the experiment. If you don't know the term human debris, you're welcome. I just taught you something awful. Uh, <laughs> So my lamp signaling system, the first time I was sitting in this room and they were telling me about safety and I thought, do I have to really know that? Like, what if I forget which way to go and my head's moving the wrong way? What if I'm too excited? Luckily, I cannot go underground without a, a guide. So they won't let me do that just yet. I love maps, so I love trails. Boy, there are maps of this place. Excellent. I did not understand them at all until I started walking with people and learning about the spaces. And I think it's cool I get to wear steel toe boots. They gave me a badge. They gave me these brass tags. You put one in your pocket, and the other one stays on the board. So if you think about that, when you're underground, at least they have some other system to know whether you came up. And there's a lot of electronics around here. It's the juxtaposition of high tech with also 100-year-old tech that is really beautiful and works well. And there's a cage that you get in, and you go underground, and it's wet and it's loud, and it's cool, and I'm not an adventure seeker, so the fact that I love doing this, the 12 minute ride a mile underground is pretty exciting to me, and I still get giddy like when I'm standing outside the cage. Okay, so I had to read a lot, and I haven't read all the books I'm gonna show you, but I'm gonna say I had to start with the ABCs of particle physics. Not joking, I remember reading it several times and saying, wait a minute, what's the difference between this and that? And I was terrified of math and science when I was in college. Almost didn't make it through my math class. So to think 20 years later, I'm going into the belly of the earth in order to learn about physics, I can say you should just believe in yourself. There are graphic novels about scientists, and they're good. And then there's the history of weed and home state and the Native American connection, which I will do my best to understand as fully as I can, because I think I want to make sure, and I know this, that I want to pay respect to every part of this. And there's a history, and it's deep and quite beautiful and interesting. And part of my exploration has been going to places in Lead and Deadwood and trying to figure out, like, why is it called the slime plant? Why was it? You know, so just stuff like that. I'm not from here. So it's all really new and exciting. The Opera House to me is absolutely beautiful. And again, you've got old and new. You've got something that has damage, but also you have things that have been repaired. 
I love color. I love ornament. If anybody recognizes this, I almost feel like I need to give a prize. <laughs> so, Dakota Shivers, I believe. I hope I'm right. This is in the bathroom. I'm in the bathroom taking pictures, people, and it's not what you think, so here it is. I stood in that bathroom and I went, oh, how cool. Man, I know what that is. And that's what people have done in this town for, what, 100 years, you know, close to it. They know what that is. So this thing that we're all, I remember just walking the Mickelson, looking up going, there's that cool thing 10 years ago. There's that cool thing. I don't know what that thing is, but it's cool. Just in case you don't know what that thing is, I feel like maybe I should. Um, it's called a head frame, and there are cables that run out of that. You can take a tour and go see this part, um, not this exact one, but there are cables that run out of that, and there's a hoist system, and it is what is taking that elevator up and down that cage I just talked about. And there's beautiful pieces everywhere, and almost all of them are just functional, so it's like beauty and function together. I also find a lot of dirty things really cool, so you're gonna see a lot of dirty things that are just neat to me. I have no idea what that big thing is for in the front, but I liked it, and I like that it's green and it's with orange. Doorways, windows, you already know this about me, I just told you. Staircases are interesting to me. Shadows are interesting to me. And the space is underground. So, Going underground and trying to understand yourself in a new space, because the walls suddenly do this, and sometimes things are poking out of them, and I am not always very good at staying linear. I'm usually talking to someone, not paying attention, maybe stepping in a hole, uh, perhaps people are yelling at me. I have been in trouble for various violations, such as running. Um, because I get so excited, I'm like about to take a running, so it's like, nope, don't do it. Stop it, we see your enthusiasm. Um, the walls are held up in some places by these plates. I'm going to show you a few things about that because I kind of love the walls because they're so different. I just love them. I love all the cables that are exposed. I love the dark and the light together. Even going underground, the light feels different. If that makes sense, it just feels different underground. I always felt way hungrier underground. And I get hangry, so I had to have snacks. I have a tiny backpack, everybody knows about this. One of those plates up close. I even like when wire's broken. I like when a wall looks like it's not finished, but it is. The idea that over time we've had one thing holding up part and another thing holding up another part. And you can look at layers of time through the elements on the walls. I just think wires are cool. I also think the ground is cool. If you never look at the ground, you should do it. It's pretty cool. Your feet gets to experience it, your eyeballs can enjoy it too. And on the ground underground, there you go, on the ground underground, there's some interesting spots also because there are gaps and sometimes I have, again, stepped in those, but there's a little tram. And at the beginning of this, you got to ride the tram with me. So the man car. And I like looking at where these things go because I'm still understanding the spaces. I'm like, oh, well that can continue out that way. I wonder what's that way in that drift. That passageway, the white stuff you see, that is um, Epsom salt or some, something similar to it. That's a really old footprint and I just thought, hey, and I put my foot beside it and I was like, that's a larger footprint than mine, very interesting. And a piece of the rail because I keep looking at the rail. Now I'm in the Davis campus. 
and I'm in an area called Myrana, and it is a clean room, which is what you just saw me in at the beginning of this, and I had to get all taped up, and again, no human debris, no not even flaking away and ruining experiment. So we apparently, I don't know if you know this, but we can actually, like, um, our skin actually has some amount of, uh, I'm trying to find the right words, um, it can be hot, and that's what they refer to a lot of things, it's like hot. So I'm just doing my best, because I was paranoid I was gonna somehow ruin an experiment. They had let me underground, and I'm gonna be the one that ruins it. I'm like, tape my hair back, I don't care. Um, and your shoes are taped up, everything's taped up. This is the world's purest copper, it is created underground. And the fact that I got to hold it, you know, I was really wigging out that day. Passageways. This is in the LZ area, also in the Davis campus. This area is pretty large, actually. Peeking through in my ladder, you know how I feel about that. So you can tell the space is pretty large. I know other people probably think, okay, there's cardboard on something. And I'm going, ooh, there's cardboard on something. Sally would like to know that Argon is empty. She's, she's famous now, right? So I got to kind of crawl into this space. And of course, I popped down. I'm like, ooh, there's a ladder and a chair together. So I mean, basically, whoever had to deal with me that day, and some of you in this room had to deal with me, and thank you for being my guide um, and watching me just wig out over everything that didn't make sense. I hear pipe bending is an art form. And look at this awesome chair. So this is not in the clean room spaces. <laughs> this is out in one of the open areas. So there are drifts. You can walk them or you can ride on the tram. <clears throat> And this was just hanging out in a little bit of an open area called the Governor's Corner, which is where everything kind of meets up. I really do like the walls. Just the fact that it's slightly different in this case. Slightly different. Practical ways of telling you where you're at or distance. Art that I found underground that I did not make. There was a lot of art underground, and one day I was at the cage, and a gentleman walked up to me and said, are you the artist in residence? And I said, yes, and he goes, I'm the only artist here. And I said, well, what have you done? And he said, everything, I mean, he was hilarious. And um, I, I learned that he did make quite a bit of art, and he did put it underground, and it was really cool. Every time I encountered a bit, I was like, oh, that's wonderful. More of the ground, more salt, more footprints. I feel like this should be a cover for like a band if I ever started one. <laughs> but those of you who know my music taste are just hoping I never start a band. <laughs> Doorways. I had to crawl through a lot of things, like in through, and it's like, okay. We're going into a dark space, cool. Turn on your headlamp. Okay, so I'll get a little geeky here. This is from the Ray Davis experiment. So you're just like walking casually through this one area and then there's a pile and you're like, and they tell you like, oh yeah, that's Ray Davis stuff. You know the ring outside here? The Stargate that everybody talks about? There's some of it. So if, I won't have time to tell you about Ray Davis, but it is worth looking up. And I'll talk to you about it after if you really want to know. I think this looks like Wally, -E, and it's pressing those plates into the wall. So of course I was like, what? What is happening? Cool. There's robots doing things underground. I keep looking at the ground too. You guys would be like, man, how does she not knock herself out or walk into something? I have on occasion. Okay, so there's blue stuff on the floor. 
I'm gonna show you another picture to explain the blue stuff on the floor. I love that color blue. And even my booties are that color, so I was super excited. So you have to put on clean shoes, and then put on booties, and then you have to step on that blue stuff that's sticky just to go into a space. I, again, felt very dusty and dirty. By the time this was over, I was like, God, how am I this dirty? But look at that orange and that blue together. Oh. So that's a nice color combination. That might show back up in July. This is the interior of one of the detectors that is in the BHSU underground campus, where they are checking for how much radioactivity or how hot something is. So little pieces and parts of other things have to be checked before you can even put them in another experiment. So there's a lot of work, like there's layers of work taking place here from every engineer I've met to physicist, a lot of people putting a lot of work in. Okay, so I got really excited in the BHSU underground campus because I got to just hang out and stare at things and then I noticed like a fan would blow and it'd make this cellophane look weird and then I would sit with it and I'd like walk around the space and you know, if you leave me alone for about 15 minutes, something, you'll probably find me like staring at something. Like, well, she's having a good time. Notice how the floor is distorted. Um, there's a piece of tape that sort of like knocks a little hole out in that reflection. I just thought it was fun. More distortion, you've got the tape, you've got like this distorted, and it's just this reflective panel basically. I think that's my booty up there. The ceilings are super interesting. So I quit looking at the ground the whole time. I did look up. I like caution tape too. I need an excuse to use more caution tape. That blue I like so much on railing. So I find it interesting as I walk through spaces that there's this color over here and the same color over there. So my brain kind of goes, ooh, does it balance? And my students will go, of course you think that. More ladders. This is above ground. LZ was assembling a detector or putting together a detector. And I got to go there while they were doing quite a bit of work. This is the back end of it. These are copper and they're like, you guys are amazing. I don't know how you do all this. Um, the front end, and you've seen this. Look at that, Matt Capist. There you go, your art. Um, I found this really interesting because I was still working through what is a PMT, a photomultiplier tube. I was still like, how does it grab light? What is it going to do with the light? How do you, how, what are you gonna do with that information? Also, I accidentally was sponsoring Apple. There's a pattern inside of the PMT that you might not be able to see easily, but it looks like a spider web. I kind of love it. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but it might come back. And then I just decided to throw a bunch of stuff on one slide and talk about it all at the same time. And the reason for that, I was interested in what happens when you capture the light with a PMT tube? What does that look like or whatever? Like, show me graphs. And of course, when you start asking scientists for things like, can I look at your data? And they're like, what are you gonna do with it? I'm like, I wanna see how the lines look. <laughs> well, what are you gonna do with the lines? I don't know yet, but I want to see the lines. Someone was kind enough to give me a bucket of cable slices, which by the way, remind me of planets. Um, I also have probably enough of these little late levels that were from Homestake, um, which are very thrilling. And I, really, I just like them. And you'll find out in a second why I like them so much. That's the back end of a PMT, which also looks like something cool. Um, and a little nod to LZ there. Um, someone brought me some copper rings to scan. So a lot of these objects I'm scanning. So I'm in physical spaces taking photos. I'm scanning objects. I am in the collection phase. There's bacteria from underground. So. It was awesome because I work at a university and my first day underground, I ran into one of our, well, one of our professors and he said, what are you doing here? And I said, well, I'm an artist here. And he's telling me about bacteria he's collecting, David Bergman, for those of you who wanna know. And he said, I'm collecting bacteria. And I kind of stepped back for a second because I thought, really? You have bacteria with you? I think that is exactly how that conversation went. He said, yeah, in my bag. And I was like, is that safe? Actually, I did say, is that safe? And he said, well, if you don't have a, do you have a weak immune system? I was like, I don't want to find out. So I said, can I see your bacteria? 
And he's like, sure. And he spent a good time with me going back and forth. I went and visited with him. We looked at bacteria together. This is all from the 4850 level. Look how cool bacteria is. So I can promise you there will be bacteria, some in the artwork and some probably on the artwork. And then we come to something that matters to me in a way that I, I'll share just a little narrative. I'm very interested in things that seem unimportant. And I am a person that will say, it's not a weed, it's a wish. So I think you have to make that decision, right? Like I try to make the decision every day. So I collect little things. And as many of my friends know, when I got a home, my thank you was I harvested wishes from my first dandelion, which by the way is very hard work if you have an HOA that's coming by and trying to mow them. So I had to like put a rock on dandelions that were left like, so I collect things that I think seem unimportant. Even my earrings have little dandelion. Uh, yeah, I even make earrings. So I just wanna say like, I get excited over these little things. And I collect all these little jars. And I, I don't know what I'm going to do with the thousands of little jars I have. But, so I'm a professor, so I have to give homework. But it'll be fun homework. So over there, I've hidden it pretty well. and I'll have to find a way to like get it to the back of the room. Maybe Matt can drag it. Um, I have a, a stack of little cards. And I have nearly 150 tiny bottles because I was kind of pumped again. Um, and I want to ask you to take a bottle home for yourself so you get an art experience. And I'd ask you to fill it with whatever you think might be worth seeing. What is something that might be unnoticed? But then you have an opportunity to say, well, I care about this thing. You know, what do you care about? So show us something. And then you can tag the lab through Deep Talks, Seeking the Unseen, or SURF AIR, which stands for SURF Artist in Residence. And it gives us an opportunity to kind of share even after the fact. And the question is, what will you seek? I have some thank yous. It's hard for me not to do. Um, I have a list, and I'm just going to name a couple of people, particularly Mike Kedley and Elizabeth Freer, because when I first came up with this idea, they didn't look at me like I was crazy. So I appreciate that. And everybody on this list, and there's plenty of people that are not on this list, I, I was agonizing over the list. There will be a bigger list July, like probably, probably a book. So I've just met so many amazing people and have felt so encouraged, and I just really appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Does anyone have questions for Gina? Thank you. Other comments, suggestions, questions? Oh, I see someone back here. How do you find how that little bottle that might be bigger than the bottle? Put that in front of that item? Oh, you're saying what if you find something that's bigger than the bottle? You can be as creative as you want to be. I'm just giving you a jumping off point. <laughs> yes? You know, I, I don't feel like I'm a photographer exactly. Um, I, I know, that's, it's, I feel like my photography is more for collecting. Um, you know, I, I, I watch people, I, I think it's, I think it'll end up being more like whatever images I produce as a result of those photos. Constance. Okay. I love working with Gina, but I want someone else to take her, please. So we, we have had a great, this has been a great opportunity for us as well. We've learned a lot about this, and this is a program we really feel that we should continue. And Gina has graciously uh, accepted our request for help in, in building a program where we can bring in more artists, we can allow people a little more access. Uh, we, we are limited in what we can let people do because we've got a lot of construction going on. Uh, Gina has been to some interesting places. 
and uh, she's she's been a lot of fun to work with. So she she might see a little bit more Ricky. We don't know yet. We'll see. We'll see how she behaves. I'm gonna be rowdy. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Any yeah. other questions? Yeah. Gina, you're a world traveler and an underground traveler. Do you have any ideas or hopes to propose an artist in residency at one of the other underground world, um, underground labs in the other parts of the world? There are some residencies um, in several places, and um, Constance and I had a chance to visit Fermilab, so we're looking into how this has been done in other places, but I definitely have, I would like the show to travel. I'd like it to be good publicity for both Black Hill State and the Sanford Lab. It would be nice. Thanks. And, and one of the uh, interesting things about Gina's program one of the interesting things about her program is we are going to have an art exhibit. And is Karen Everett in the room? Karen Everett is the uh, director of the LEAD Deadwood Art Center. So we're going to be partnering with her to put on a show. And it'll run right around uh, Neutrino Days. So look for the opening that we're going to have for Gina's artwork. And just you should stop by that LEAD Deadwood Art Center any chance you get. They've got some beautiful stuff in there. And we're excited to partner with with Karen and her team. Well, if you find that you have a question or you go home and you're like, I don't know what that woman just said, my email address is right there. I am happy to answer emails. And if you have questions about how I work as an artist or you know anything, so I'm happy to answer. Yeah. OK, so Gina, I have a little something for you if I haven't lost it. Yeah, here we go. So as an artist, I think she should have a pencil. It's, it's a Sanford Lab pencil. I have a lot of them out front, so you're not the only one who gets one. Anybody can pick But if you ever find yourself in a situation where you just need to draw something, it's not charcoal, but it does work. Thank you. Thank you. Also, we have this wonderful Sanford Lab propelled in Thank blue. you. And thank you so thank much. You. Thank, Laura, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.